Toastmaster, Mr. President, fellow Toastmasters, and most welcome guests. Raise your hand if you had a childhood hero. Great. What was your... Probably one of the variety of sporting heroes. Variety of sporting heroes. Great. Alistair, you had your hand raised. Um, probably uh, Steve McQueen. Steve McQueen. Good choice. Abdul. Oh, historical. 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 That if I really wanted it, it was um, Superman. Really. Superman. Okay, great. All the variety of uh, heroes we had. When I was a schoolboy, my hero was Alexander the Great. So many heroic deeds, so many rumbuckles. Hey. <laughs> things he did in his lifetime. At the age of 12, he tamed a wild stallion where many others in the court had failed. When he had done that, his father said, Alexander, you better find yourself a larger kingdom because mine is not going to be big enough for you. At the age of 19, he, he inherited the kingdom of Macedonia. And within 10 short years, he turned it into the one of the largest empires the world had ever seen, stretching all the way from the Balkans in the west to the east, to the river banks of the river Indus, to the north, to the Central Asian heartlands around the Caspian Sea, and down to the south, to Egypt, where he was crowned a god king. So many heroic deeds along the way. People still marvel how he won so many battles against overwhelming odds, outnumbered by two to one, by three to one, by five to one, at the battle of Granicus, Issus, or Guadamela. He was never beaten in battle. Along the way, he tried to assimilate and integrate all the cultures he came across. He himself took on the dress the culture of uh, his conquered people. And he encouraged other people to do the same. Much more enlightened than a lot of rulers who came along a lot, uh, later. He always <laughs> led from the front. <coughs> On his shiny black steed, in shiny white armor, he would charge into the battle first. He would go over castle ramparts before his soldiers. In full medical armor, he would climb sheer faces, cliff edges, to attack an impregnable force. Is it any wonder that strategists and tacticians and management gurus <coughs> use the lessons that he taught us in their speeches? That's a shiny, the Instagram version of the story. <laughs> <laughs> Many years later, I came across another site to Alexander. All the human frailties laid out. Vanity, vainglorious, short of temper, life of excess. Adverse, as the smallest hints. Take, for example, the apocryphal stories of the apocryphal stories of his uh, army's drinking excesses where 40 or more soldiers could die in days of endless drinking. Where he himself, in a drunken rage, would pick an argument with the closest ace <coughs> and kill them quite often. It is said that it was during one of these drunken orgies that he and his army burned down the crown jewel in the Persian Empire, the fabled city of Persepolis, a sheer act of vandalism, you might say. Bad. But there was an even ugly side to his story. He was totally ruthless. He was totally uh, uh, cruel in what he did. After the Battle of Granicus, which I just mentioned, he had 10,000 Greek mercenaries put to sword. They had not fought against him. They had surrendered, but he wanted to set an example. After the long siege 
of the city of Tyre, he had all the men for butcher, all the women and children sold in slavery. After 12 long years, his army refused to go any further than the river Indus. Reluctantly, he agreed to turn back. But the following morning, he invited all the real leaders of the mutiny on some pretext of celebration and had them slaughtered. So there you have it. The good, the bad, and the ugly all rolled into one young man. But why am I telling you the story? Because on the way back to Greece, in the city of Babylon, he was taken ill. After 12 days of agony, he realized he was close to death. He called all his generals together and asked them for three things. One, that only the physicians would carry out his body. Two, that all the treasures of his personal treasury would be strewn along the path to the cemetery. And three, that on the funeral cortege, his hand would be left standing. Tearfully, the people asked why. He said, there are three lessons I've learned. One, there's no doctor, no physician that can save, save anybody. No doctor can save you from the clutches of death. Let not people forget that life is your most important treasure. Look after your health, look after your life. Two, the reason for strewing gold, silver, and precious stones along the way to the cemetery is to say that I have had a life in thirst of greed of power, in thirst of in greed of riches. But I cannot take anything away with me. So I leave it all behind. Wealth for wealth's sake is not important. And three, the reason I ask for my hands to be dangling from the cortege is because I came empty handed into this world and I leave empty handed back. So, let that be a lesson. Your health, as has been pointed out, is very important to you. Look after it. Do not take it for granted. Wealth, for wealth's sake, is not important. It's how you enjoy it, how you share it with others in your lifetime that matters. What you do for yourself will die with you. What you do for others lives on forever. But I'm just